Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And you did hear about Brother Brown, right? Yes. They get the word on Brother Brown. And they called us early in the morning and said Brother Brown had passed. Some of you, I know a lot of you don't know him, but Brother Brown was was on our church board here for a long time. And uh, he was in the prison ministry for a long time. And he was so well known there because he would go down there and he'd be singing in Spanish and yes, doing everything. Boy, just had a great time down there, so they're going to miss him in prison. And um, so we, we will be going by visiting with the family. I just had to have possibly a memorial service on Saturday they were talking about it. I don't know if we'll be here or not, but uh, they will be having this service. At, uh, I don't even know where it's going to be at yet. They haven't told us. So anyway, but I'm honored today for Youth Sunday and to see the youth that are here. And I know you've got a word that's going to be coming to you. I'm excited about hearing it. Uh, Mr. Russell and Monica joined up with us. And boy, I tell you, it's been nothing but woo, beautiful asset for the, for the church. And, and I know also it's going to be for the community because they have so much to give. And you'd be surprised some of the things they've already given to this, to this ministry already. They not only has a blessed the ministry, but even those from the outside have been able to come in and receive so much from these two. So I'm so honored that I would have them to come forth and to be able to speak to the youth this morning. So I'm telling the youth, keep your ears open. Listen because something's good's about to happen to you. Something good is going to happen because you're going to receive an awesome word. I just wish the rest of the people that were normally here that are not here today, uh, traveling, 18 months, I guess they're back from Haiti. I don't know. I wish they were here. Um, Liar, Pastor Liar, this family is not here. They should be here also. There's so many that's normally here that's not here this morning. Thank God Patrick is recording. Thank God Patrick is recording. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. And that's going to be awesome. They will be able to receive it anyway. So Amen. those of you that are here, thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, you're going to be blessed. I know that. They've got a word to give. Amen. So for some of you that may not know who they are, <laughs> but most of you already know who they are, Mr. Russell and Monica, please come forward. All right, baby, what side do you want? I'm going to take the left, because you always right. I want to argue with you there. Say that one more time for the camera for him. <laughs> I just want to say to him that uh, they heard that. Been recorded. <laughs> okay, but um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, mom and pop, or pastor and co-pastor. <laughs> um, thank you for giving us this opportunity to um, deliver a message to the church and to the youth. We really appreciate it, and we're we're humbled that you would trust us enough to deliver our message. And we don't take that lightly, so thank you. <laughs> um, as some of you may know, I delivered a message. Uh, my husband says, my five hot minute message. And um, my husband has delivered a few messages. But this is the first time that we're going to be doing it together. So um, this is going to be a little different, but uh, I look forward to it, and I look forward to this not being our last time that we, that right, we do this. Um, when asked to deliver the message, I felt compelled for us to do it together because it was so important. The message was so important. And the title of the message today is Falling in Love with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Can you get with that message title? Falling in love with Jesus. Yes, because you want to fall in love in and out and every day. And, mm -hmm. and uh, they really need to be falling in love with Jesus. Amen. Not Amen. with each other. Not with these little chicken head girls. And these <laughs> little head boys. <laughs> scrubs. <laughs> they need to fall in love with Jesus. I think my wife is loosened up this morning. <laughs> and ready to go. 
Before we endeavor to go any further, let us have a moment of prayer. Yes. Father God, we come humbly before you once and again with thanks in our heart and joy, Lord God, realizing that you are the God that sits high and looks low, yes. that you smile down upon your children. Lord God, you've been blessing us when we didn't even deserve to be blessed. Yes. And we thank you, Lord. Yes. Continue to be with us even in the midst of this service. Let your spirit abide, dear Lord. Speak what thus saith the Lord to your people. Let their hearts be touched. And remember the youth in a special manner on this day. Let them get something out of your word. And go forward in life. And use it to your glory and to your honor. We thank you for this and for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now in falling in love with Jesus, we can think about how we love our spouse. We love our moms, our dads. We love our sons and our daughters, our sisters, our brothers, aunts, uncles, Friends. just family, everyone, each and every one of you. We love you. But you know, there's something special about loving the Lord. We look at mom and pop here, and we say, I love you, mom. I love you, pop. Because we love everyone. And they love everyone. They live the life that they talk about, that they preach about. And it's hard to find that. But you know what? As much as we love everyone, God is the greatest love in our life. Amen. He is my Lord and my Savior. Amen. And I can't think of a better person to fall in love with. After all, He first loved me. But before we get too involved in talking about falling in love with Jesus, let's talk about process of falling in love, how people fall in love in general. Um, in the world, you become interested in a person in two ways. Um, oftentimes, a man sees a woman, and there's something that catches his eye. Well. <laughs> it could be a physical attraction, the way that she's dressed, or her I see you, baby. <laughs> for uh, for women, it could be uh, the way that he's dressed, or a man in uniform. You know, my husband's a police sergeant. Dr. ATM wears scrubs. It could be the uniform. Um, it could be their eyes, their smile, or a particular feature. But uh, it's that initial attraction, whatever it is that desires a, uh, that fuels a desire for us to meet the person. And uh, if it doesn't happen that way, the other way that it happens is uh, sometimes there's an attraction through time that you become familiar with the person. You hang around with the person. Uh, the person's hanging around with you or your brother, your sister, with your friends. Um, or a situation comes up and you have to depend on the person. Or the person is just always there. They're in all your classes, live next door. But you begin to see that person in a different light. Mm -hmm. So those are the two ways that you become interested in a person. Okay. Now we look at those two examples and relate it to the church. Sometimes we are initially attracted to the church or Christ through a movie. I remember as a teenager, one of the first movies I saw was A Thief in the Night. And when I saw that movie and everywhere you looked, you saw two people together. And one would disappear and be left in this world be here below. And I thought to myself, I do not want to be that one who's left behind. I don't want to be that one. So. Another way you can fall in love is a book, visiting the church, music can be awesome, the people could be friendly, the minister seems to deliver a sermon where you might think he or she is talking directly to you. And sometimes that message is favorable, it makes you feel good. 
Wow, how did they know that? Nobody knows that about me. And then it could be a message of chastisement. But nevertheless, just get it right. Just get it right. However this comes about, there's instant attraction or interest. But be careful. You don't want to get involved in a cult. You must be sure that the doctrine lines up with the Word of God. We don't want any pigeon religion. When I think about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he got baptized, he came straightway out of the wall. And the Spirit of God descended upon him as a dove. Doves and pigeons look very similar, but they don't have the same attributes. There's something much more special and precious about a dove. Now as children, when our parents brought us to church and dressed us in our handsome clothes, Josh, or our pretty clothes, Zarina, well, they go to church and they have some questions. Why do we have to go? And once they got to church, they had to sit still. And the church folks were always hugging and kissing on them. They were always around before church, after church, Coming over to the house. at your house, <laughs> always praying, talking, and it was long and maybe boring. <laughs> but you didn't understand, and you continued to go, and you grew older, and your understanding began and grew, and you began to like church. You began to like the hymn. As the songwriter said, you understand it better by and by. And before you realize you actually enjoy church, your parents are no longer making you go. You want to go on your own. It's no longer being boring. You start hugging the people back. You start talking to the people, praying for the people. You change after time. And it became an important part of your life and without realizing a necessary part of your life. Yes. So in the world, you go from being interested to spending time uh, with a person. you go from being interested to wanting to spend time with a person in the world. You want to um, Once you become interested, you want that person's phone number. So, because you want to talk to that person. Yes, yes. So, uh, when I was young, uh, you know, we wanted the person's number, but young people today, they want the person's cell phone number because they want to text, Snapchat, they want to Facebook, they want to communicate with, um, with the person. They want to stay, they want to stay in contact. And why? Because they are hoping to stay in contact because they want to, that's going to feed their interest in the person. They want to develop a relationship with the person. So if you don't do it that way, if you spend time with the person, um, in my day, when I was young, we used to spend time with people. We used to get together in groups and go to the movies or um, we used to hang out at the mall and we would get dressed and our fly gear, as I called it, or fresh gear, and we put on makeup and do our hair, but you wanted that person to see you, you wanted to, to spend time with that person. Um, so there was a hope and a desire. And in the church, you want to, be, want you to become interested 
you want to read the Bible, either cover to cover, maybe a specific book that you're interested in. You want to listen to Christian music, gospel, gospel rap, etc. It becomes intensified as you develop this interest. And you want to go to Bible study, join the choir, attend Sunday school. You want to go to children's church, learn how to dance for the Lord. Once that spark is there, your interest is peaked, and you want to feed it by spending time doing church activities or spending it with church folk. Yeah. So in the world, once you go from interested and you want to spend time, and then the next step is doing nice things. Uh, when I was in school, we wrote each other notes. I don't know, do you guys write notes in school now, sir? Okay, on paper. We, we wrote each other notes, and we would pass them in the hall. We snuck them in the hall, or you went to class, and you'd pass them around across the desks, and you'd get your note, and it would be folded nice and neat, and have your name on the outside, and you'd open it up, and it would have sweet nothings, or it would say, oh, I like your hair, you look pretty today, or... Um, and if you were lucky, after all these sweet nothings, you'd get at the bottom, do you like me, yes, no, or maybe, for you to check the box. <laughs> See, y'all still check boxes, baby. Oh, okay. So you, you text. Okay, okay. Oh, no, we did that in high school because we didn't have cell phones to text. No, 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 no. Um, when I was dating for my, when I was dating my husband, um, I would do a nice things. I would send him home with food. Um, yes, it was. Yes. I had what he called the magic freezer, where I would bake pies and cakes and cut them up and wrap them nicely. All my secrets. Yes, yes. So I open up the freezer and send him with cakes and pies and goodies, and um, I'd make his make his. <laughs> I think somebody else knows about this. <laughs> Yeah, that's my uncle got Janet. I did. <laughs> she needs no, like, a cake. <laughs> but um, but yeah, if and I would make him sandwiches for breakfast and send him on the road with sandwiches for breakfast and lunch. Yes, my brother says <laughs> for lunch. It never made it to work. <laughs> <laughs> I would make him sweet tea, and um, it was therapy sweet. By the grace of God, he didn't develop diabetes while we were dating, but I would make him tea. But the point is, I did nice things for him, and he did nice things for me, because we were in that stage of love. Yes, you did, baby. Okay. Yes, you did. Now, in the church, when it comes to doing nice things, maybe you want to hold a food drive, or go to a homeless shelter, or volunteer because you're interested and others and their struggles. You know it's good to get out of self and want to help and do for others yes. that are in need, yes. that are less fortunate than you are. Yes. Maybe you wanted to raise money by having bake sales. Maybe you wanted to evangelize, do missionary work. But you definitely want to pay your tithes and just do things that would make you a good steward of the Lord. So in the world, uh, after you, in the world you want to spend all your time with that person, and this is the next stage. We're making progress in yes. this relationship. Yes, we are. We're spending time. Right. And when you're not spending all your time with that person, you're thinking about that That's person. Right. Yeah. Um, so when you're spending time, you're doing rated G stuff. You're, you're going to the movies. You're going to eat, you're shopping, you're taking trips together, your long walks, car mm -hmm. rides. Right. Um, you're always enjoying each other's company. You're never running out of things to talk about. Um, you're never at a loss for words. Uh, you want to do everything you can. Uh, you want to do whatever makes that person happy. You want to find out what makes that person tick. When um, Russell and I first met, uh, our first date, uh -oh. <laughs> it was, he says it was 21 hours, 21. and I said it was 23. 
but that's still a long date for a first date. We didn't plan to spend that much time. We started off going to breakfast at Panera. And we were having so much fun together that it continued. After Panera, we went to another venue. We ended up going to lunch. We ended up going to dinner. I mean, we just spent, as I said, 21. He says 21. I say 23 hours. But um, we didn't want to leave each other. We found things to do, to talk about. And again, it was all rated G. All rated G. Amen. All right, for the few brothers that are here looking at me kind of crazy. Man, you spent 21 hours with her and it was rated G? Yes. yes he well, when I met her, and even before I met her, my player card had already been turned in. So yes, it was rated G. Yes, all he did was hold my hand. Now, in the church, you want to spend all your time. We talked about participating in church activities, listening to Christian music or reading the word. But now you are praying more, hearing God more as you meditate, and more and truly strive to be an example before man, witnessing to everyone that will listen. Yes. So, in the world, all of these steps are leading up to your first kiss. Um, we all remember our first kiss. Yeah. If we're married, we forgot it, and we remember our first kiss with our spouse. And for some of us, it might be your spouse is your first kiss. But um, the first kiss for Russell and myself, remember I said we... Spent 23 hours together. Well, he, well, he left. He left. And uh, he called me on the phone. And as I was talking to him, I got ready for bed. I had these, um, I had these onesies, these footy pajamas. I put on my footy pajamas, and I was comfortable talking to him. And he said, and we were just reflecting on how much fun we had, how enjoyable the date was. And. Uh, he said, you know, I spent all that time and I didn't even get a kiss. And I said, well, you could have. <laughs> and he said, don't say that, because I would do a U-turn on Route 30. <laughs> and I said, hey, if you do a U-turn on Route 30, don't get arrested, you know. I'll see you when you get here. <laughs> so he did. He turned around, he came back, and he came in the door, and we talked for about five minutes and he gave me a kiss and he left. But again, it was a G kiss. It wasn't like, you know, when you were in school you see people in the hall, lockers, and they right, they all down each other's tongues and it's just gross. It wasn't that. He just gave me a kiss and, and, and left. That's why you had two hours. All right, Josh. <laughs> I know Josh wants to blush back <laughs> Now, when it comes to a kiss that is spiritual, is different for each person. It could be the day you first of your first communion, the day that you first accepted Christ, or the day you were baptized. But for me, it was when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. The day I accepted Christ was the day I was changed. There was a difference in me. I wasn't perfect. And in this flesh, I never will be. I don't do everything right. But I know God made a change. Yes. And it's been a mighty blessing to me. Yes, and for me, my first kiss in Christ was the same. It, was, it wasn't the same day, but it was the, the same. It was when I accepted uh, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, it was so special to me. I remember I had on a purple suit. And I still have that suit. I can't wear it right now, but I still have it. I'm going to get back in it, but I, I still I have it. And that suit was so memorable and so important to me. I still have it. And at one time, I wanted to be buried in that suit. That's how important that suit was to me. Um, but in the, in the world, once you realize that uh, you're in love, because you're constant, because you're being consumed by that person. They're in all of your emotions, your thoughts, your dreams, your desires. Um, you want to build a future with that person. You can see yourself 
with that person long term or indefinitely. Mm -hmm. um, you want that person to be all yours. You want to be exclusive. That's when you realize that, uh, that you're in love. And in 1 Corinthians um, 13, 4 through 8, and there we put it up on the screen in the English Standard Version, it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. My, my, my. But when you think about the sacrifice of Christ, what he did, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Amen. that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves his son. And he would not suffer his son. No husband or wife, though, would make this sacrifice that God made. Wouldn't do it. The ultimate death. When you receive the Holy Spirit and feel the anointing power that keeps and leads you and guides you into all truths and fills you with unspeakable joy, that kind of joy you can't find words to even describe it. When the realization of how unworthy I am, that's when I realize I'm in love yes, yes. with Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And in the world, the next step is you want to spend the rest of your life with that person. You want to get married. And as Beyonce sings the song, you want to put a ring on it. And I don't mean shacking up or playing house or fornicating, but you want to enter into a covenant with that person. Amen. Amen. Jesus wants you to spend time with him. And you're at a point where you want to spend time with him for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Your natural life, serving him through praise and worship. And I must speak about that for a minute. We come to church and we have praise and worship. And I was like this at one time. I didn't want to take a lot of time for praise and worship. I thought you come in, you sing a song or two, and then it's time for the preacher to come in and, and preach the word. But I found out that praise and worship is so powerful. Yes. Yes. It's much needed. Yes. 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 If you don't have that, you're going to be lost a little bit. Yes. God dwells in the midst of perfect praise. Yes. Take time out. Praise Him. Worship Him. Mm -hmm. Get personal with Him. Mm -hmm. And see the blessings. Yes. Because when the praises go up, yes. the blessings, sure enough, are going to come down. So take time out for praise and worship and work toward your ultimate goal. I press toward the mark for the high prizing of God in Christ Jesus. Keep on pressing on. There's a prize ahead. Go ahead, baby. In the world, uh, after you get married, comes intimacy. We're supposed to wait until we get married because God created intimacy for a husband and his wife. And once there's intimacy, there's a connection formed. Amen. In the church, when it comes to intimacy, and do we have it? First Corinthians 12, 8 through 11. Okay, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another 
diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. If you want to get intimate with God, receive some of the gifts of God. Amen. Now that we've described the process of falling in love, let's discuss the pitfalls or the challenges of falling in love. In the world, you break up or something happens and your heart is broken. Maybe he or she moves away. Um, in my day when I was young, I moved from Maryland to California. And that was during a time when we had long distance. Uh, we had to pay by the minute to place calls, or we didn't, your parents did. So uh, calls weren't free. That was before voice over IP, that was before cell phones, um, that was before email, that was before affordable computers. But now, as young people, if the person moves away, it's not so um, important. It is, but it's not because, you know, you can still connect. Another pitfall would be if the person you love cheats or isn't interested in you anymore or he or she wants to take the relationship farther than you're comfortable with. They want to progress. Um, maybe your heart is broken because of peer pressure. Maybe because you yourself don't want to be in a relationship or the relationship becomes too serious. Maybe you've grown apart, or you've matured. Uh, your interests change. Or maybe you're no longer compatible, or your goals don't line up with the other person. And some of the spiritual challenges or pitfalls are you're yielding to temptations. Maybe something happens at the church. Pastor disappoints you, or the leadership disappoints you. You move away, or the church becomes out of order. You could outgrow the church, or the church outgrows you. You are forced to wonder if there's a real church out there. More examples would be, maybe you are offended by something that was said or done. Maybe you backslid, being attracted to the things of the world. And we know that even Jesus was tempted, the temptation of his life by the enemy. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Yes. But the word delivered him. Praise the Lord. In the world, you don't break up, you stay with that person, or you get married. And a pitfall in a relationship would be that the relationship changes. The person becomes like a brother or a sister or a friend. Uh, the term used in the world is falling out of love. Basically, there's no longer a spark. Also, if the other person becomes attracted to someone else, or the newness of your relationship is gone, the relationship becomes routine. Now, in the church, you become stagnant. You are content to come every Sunday, sit in the same seat, mm -hmm. say the same prayer. Mm -hmm. You listen to the message, you maybe sing, and then you go home. You become comfortable just being there, but you don't want to be stretched. You feel like there's no room to grow. You're grown already. You don't want to change or you don't want things in your church to change. People don't recognize you as Christians anymore outside of the church. Yes. And now that we've discussed the challenges and the pitfalls, let's address them. In the world, uh, when you have your first disagreement, fight, argument, however you want to phrase it. Um, the first time you have a disagreement in the world, you think, what happened to that sweet person that I was with, that I fell in love with? What's wrong? How are we going to survive? How are we going to get past this? Sometimes you say nothing, and sometimes, uh, we as women, I'm guilty, we just dive in and argue. But hopefully, you find some sort of compromise or you agree to disagree. Um, but there, and at the end of it all, there's growth and there's understanding as a result. Now in the church, you might have a difference of opinion or ideology. 
Church folks are good for judging people. We have all seen examples of Christians on television talking about hating Muslims or outside abortion clinics or hating homosexuals. As Christians, who are we to judge our brethren? The Bible talks about sin. And God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin that's in him. How many of us practice true love toward our fellow man? Yeah. Our pastors are a great example of loving people in spite of how they act or treat them. Yeah. Now, how do we stop judging people and recover from a state of backsliding? How do we get back to our true love? First, we have to be godly sorry for our sins that caused us to backslide and be separated from God by repenting. Yes. Knowing that we serve a God who is faithful and just to forgive us, and not just that, but to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, you'll need to come before the Lord and rededicate yourself to Him. You need to get into the Word. Don't just read it, study it. You need to ask God like David, renew in me a right spirit. Cleanse my hands and my heart. Yes, yes. God is able. Yes. Continue to walk in the spirit that you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you ask to do new things, embrace them rather than fear them. Maybe you are being asked because it is required or necessary to fulfill your growth. Yes, if you are sincere, you will be like the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about it. God loves his son. God will welcome you back and give you his best. Yes. Like the song says, I am not forgotten. God knows my name. Yes. So in closing, I ask the question, what stage are you in when it comes to falling in love with Jesus? Trust him, never doubt him. Falling in love with Jesus assures you that you will not be cheated on, that you won't lie awake worrying. He's the one that gives you joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. He's the one that can comfort me like no other, and he puts a smile on my face my every day. He takes care of each of us like no other. When I need food, he provides it. When he provides a roof over my head and our children's head. Yeah. It has been said that he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Always. He's the one that gives you victory, true victory, total victory, total and complete he makes my enemy my footstool. Mm -hmm. His name is matchless. Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't want to fall in Jesus? Oh, how I've fallen in love with Jesus. I ask you now, again, have you fallen in love with him? Falling he is the only one worthy of all of your love. Again, Jesus. we ask, what stage are you in when it comes to falling in love with Jesus? Are you at the very beginning where you accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior? Or do you know him for yourself and you're taking time out, building on your relationship? Are you growing up in your relationship with him? And you know him intimately. I know him to be my rock, my sword and my shield. I find him to be the wheel in the middle of a wheel. I know he'll never, he'll never let me down. He's been good to me. He set me free. He said, live when the doctor said, you might not make it. That's the kind of God that I serve. I love him today. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want he makes me to lie down in the green pasture. He is so good. 
You know, further along in that song, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know what? Sometimes there are people in your life, they don't want to see you be successful. They don't want to see you make it. They talk about you. They do things that ridicule you and make you want to stay far from them. But my God is an awesome God. He makes a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil. I don't know what your cup, but my cup runneth over. And I find out that surely goodness and true mercy, it has been following me all the days of my life. I'm in love with Jesus. I felt he had head over heels in love with Jesus. You know why? Because he's made me a promise that one day, after a while and by and by, when this life down here is over, he's got me another home. He's got me another home. And I want to see it for myself. I love my mother. I love my father. I love my sisters, my brother. And Lord knows I love my wife. But you know, when I see Jesus, the man who died for me, when I see Jesus, the one that set me free, when I see Jesus, amen. Fall in love with him for yourself. He's like, he's like none of us. Fall in love with him. God bless you. And have a smile upon you. Like falling in love with Jesus. Yes. Ah, thank you all. Thank you so, so. You ought to pick something up on that. You should have picked up something on that. Because it is something about falling in love with each other and then falling in love with Jesus. Wow, awesome. You brought back so many memories of you all was going through these things. I can remember his childhood. You know, my wife and I have been married going on 55 years. At that time, we didn't have telephones like you all have. I remember her telephone number, J U three nine three seven seven. That's back when I was a small young boy carrying her books home from grade school. Hey, I, 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 if, if we had letters in the phone number, J U three nine three seven seven. Not only did you do that, but when you dialed an operator, picked it up, <laughs> and, she, and she would change it over and plug it into who you wanted to talk to. And then, oh yes, I go back and say, "What's those cell phones for?" Yeah, I, you know, I remember, yeah, I was limited how long I could talk to her, so y'all brought back some memories there. Maybe he's starting to think about the importance. I think of everything else as youth, you know, there's a thing that, there is an attraction that takes place. Uh, yes, and that's a normal attraction. But keep it under control. Amen. Keep it under control. Keep it G. Keep it G. Keep it G. Like Kenny G. <laughs> My honey likes Kenny G. So he, we keep it a G. Keep it a G rated. And that's what it's all about. So that's great. Then as you all get older, keep in mind, don't be with somebody. You, you're particular to the young ladies. I'm, I'm, oh, I, I like to counsel with young ladies before they get married. I like to counsel with young ladies before they get married. I tell them all the time, don't be messing with no boy that can't make you better than what you are. Don't you mess around and get what some boy going, that you want to take care of. Don't you do that. Don't you do nothing like that, see? Oh, I, I, I counsel with young ladies. I say, Let me talk to that boy before you get involved. You go to this church, you got a little boy you're interested in? Have him come talk to me first. I'm ready. I'm willing. I'll talk to them. And they, they'll fess up. <laughs> or they'll run out. <laughs> A man, something came to me. Yes, indeed. They come to me and they says, Papa, I want you to talk to him. I'm interested in it. He's so sweet. He's so nice. The other way he talked to me, he goes, oh, he is, he's everything. You know? Let me feel like I ain't never felt before. Let me talk to that boy for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel that way about him like you. Let me talk to him. Then I give him a word or two. Pop talk to him a little different than the rest of y'all, see? When I get through with the evening, you're going to fess up? 
or we're going to run out. And I've, like I said, I've seen them run out. <laughs> One little boy came to me after he says, even her daddy didn't recognize who I was, but you, you cut me right up. He headed back to Florida, got out of here quick. <laughs> he said, the same day, he said, you read my whole card, I've got to get out of here. <laughs> so yes, that word should be good for the youth. Very, very good word for the youth. And this is what the youth really needs. And don't be, don't be hesitant. Don't be afraid to come and talk to your parents. Don't, don't let fear stop you from talking to your parents. Don't, don't let fear have you where you won't even come and talk to your pastor. Let me tell you, your pastors are always available. We've been married going on 55 years. We know a little bit of something. That's a long time. And like I said, I carried her books in grade school. We had no book bag. No, that's why I carried your books. And I wasn't worried about schools. I wasn't bringing those books home. <laughs> you got to worry about me carrying a book. I didn't want to go to school anyway. The only week because I knew I'd see her on the way home. <laughs> that's all it was. That poor boy going to marry that Nichols girl someday. And lo and behold, we did. So I'm saying to you, that was a good word for you. I hope you, I hope this registered. And we, are, and we do want to get some more things involved with the youth. There are so many things I have in mind that I would love to do. And if we have adults that are willing to do it, I am, I am willing to put whatever funds it takes to do what we need to do for our youth program. Uh, like I said, we had it one time, the youth was such powerful, and I would like to go back and to have a little cookout for the kids, and, and even, even uh, showing some movies with pizzas and stuff like that. I'm willing to do that. I, I mean, we got we have the ability. We can show the videos. We can, uh, of course, you know, what kind of videos we're going to be showing. They're going to be cheap. It's going to be cheap. But I will throw some pizzas out here. I have pizza party and games, and I'm willing to do that. I, I, if I just have someone willing to run it and to do the program, boy, I tell you what. We even had a prom. Yes, we did. We even had a prom. We had a prom in New York now. And not only did we have a prom, but we had a limbo to come by and pick the kids up. Yes, we did. We paid for the limo to come and get them. So we're willing to do those things. So I want to get the youth, youth program back into play again. I, we're just sitting around and we need to get more involved with a lot of things we need to do. And so I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you all for that word. Not only did you bless me, but I'm quite sure you blessed the rest of them there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Ooh. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to say, darling? I, do. I knew you did. I do. I do. When you when he talked about that, they all, you know, he didn't want to go to school. He, he had to go to school. He had to graduate. And this is the time when we came through. But it was. It, oh, I'm sorry. It was the fact that even as uh, he asked my father, could he marry me? The first thing my father asked him is, how are you going to take care of my daughter? Do you have a job? So he blames me for spending 21 years in the military. He said, yes, yes, Brother Nichols, I'm going back to the Army. He said, well, if you do that, then you can marry my daughter. I'm going to say, tell the truth. Because he told me it's going to cost you. He says, it's going to cost you. And I says, okay, what's it going to cost me? He says, give me a quota. That's the way he said, give me a quota. And so I reached in my pocket and I gave, her a, gave him a quota. And he took it. He took it. Yeah, he took that quota. <laughs> That's what he called. He called it a quota. So I said, okay. And we got got married, moved down to Fort Benning, Georgia. Man, I was in uniform. See, I was in uniform. We were married six months. Went back home to visit. I reached in. I says, uh, I'll take my quota back if you take her. <laughs> he said, Oh no, you got her now. <laughs> he said, no. I said, I, don't, I, I tell you what, give me a dime and you can have her back. <laughs> I said, keep your quarter, just take her back. <laughs> he said, oh no, you got her now. So we, we, we stayed married. We did, we did. I tried to give her back after six months. That was my counseling. That was my counseling that I got prior to marriage. Yeah. But the Sims told me, the, uh, Mr. Sims told me, he says, before we got married, he says, this is my this is my marriage counseling that I got before we got married. He says, uh, "Young man," I says, "Yes, sir, Mr. Sims." He says, "So you want to marry that Nichols girl, huh?" I says, "Well, yes, sir." He said, "Well, let me give you some advice." I said, "Yes, sir." You know, we said yes, sir. Then we didn't. Yes, sir. 
He said, the first six months, you're going to love that girl so much you can eat her up. He said, the second six months, you're going to wish you had her. <laughs> and I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> that was a good counseling, boy. So I tried to eat her up the second six months, and she kept refusing to be eaten. So we're still together 55 years later. We're still together. We haven't changed as of yet. But praise God, it has been a marvelous 55 years. And how many more years is it going to be? It's after the Lord because we ain't going nowhere now. I got too much invested to run now. <laughs> caught, caught you too much to leave, man. <laughs> you can't afford to leave. Now. You got to stay there. So it's been awesome. It has been awesome. Thank you all so, so very much. This, is, this has been great. This has been good. And I'm looking forward to the next youth program where we'll be able to get together with some other things. And in between that time, maybe we can get some things going. Amen. Uh, get some names of some of the kids here and start getting it out a little bit so we can get a program going. That would be awesome. I would love to see that happen. Oh, Tuesday? If, if we can get some people here on Tuesday, that would be nice. If we can get some hot dogs and, and meet with the people out here and just be able to share with them who we are. That's all it is. And uh, we'll I'll get the little gas machine out here and burn up some hot dogs and, and some uh, get some uh, uh, condiments that we can get there and and we can have a good time out here. Oh, a couple of Monica's cakes will bring them all right in here. If it's Big Russell around, you know it'll bring some folks around here. <laughs> yeah, you pull out some of those cakes in the freezer. <laughs> get out some of them cakes in the freezer. Absolutely. Well, this afternoon we're going to have a very busy evening. We have to go to Maryland. We'll be doing an ordination in Maryland this afternoon. So we, we've got to get on the road, I guess. But uh, just prior to that, we'll get ready to close out. I'm going to ask you all the witches that you all, the youth, would you all come and just close us out? Yeah. And I like this seeing you all as a couple. That, that's good. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. How that's how we got started. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good, yes. and we truly hope that you enjoyed your time here today and you got something out of the Word. Oh, yes. I want to thank you, Mom, for keeping your promise. Yes. yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. The text messages. Young man, and <laughs> handsome yes. young man and Seth and the beautiful young ladies, and I can't leave you out, little man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And do me a favor, tell your husband that I said thank you. Yeah, yeah, we told them we were having youth day. Um, we we ran into them at a, a mutual friend's house, and I told Talisha, and she said, okay, whatever you need us to do, and the songs kept changing, because praise and worship, people got sick, people, oh, it was a mess, so that's what, the only reason why they weren't up here with us. And um, then my husband saw uh, Linville, and he said, oh, we're having a youth day. You think you can round up some youth? And what do you say, baby? that I can bring at least five. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we both fell out right <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you to my mother. She rounded up Laura, Lindsay, <laughs> my brother, my niece. So yes, thank you. She, yes. she was like the Pied Piper rounding up children. <laughs> so thank you. Sometimes it takes a village. Amen. It takes a village. Amen. So if all hearts and minds are clear, would you please stand? Father God, we want to thank you once and again for allowing us to be in the service of the Lord one more time. Yes, Father. We want to thank you for how you spoke to our hearts and our minds. And Lord God, we want to thank you for loving us so that you did send your son Jesus. And Lord God, make no mistake about it. We your people. Realize that he died for our sins and he's given us back the right to the tree of life. And we've fallen in love with him. Continue to bless us in our relationship with him as we onward go. We thank you for these and all other blessings. Now pass, bless our pastor, our co-pastor as they travel the highways and byways being about the work of the Lord. Be in the midst of Lord God at the evening celebration and bless mightily we pray comfort the hearts again 
of the Brown family. Remember, Lord God, Sister our sister Teresa. Lord God, you are a heart fixer yes. and a mind regulator. Yes. June, bless June. A very present help in time of trouble. Remember June wise. Continue to give her full healing. Her family and loved ones also. In the name of Jesus. And all those that we may have on the prayer list. All those that were not present today. We thank you for these and all blessings again. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.